that might help. <laughs> yeah, we are stubborn assholes in Finland, and unlike our friends in the Scandinavia, we are not part of the Scandinavia but Nordics, and we stay on time, so 20 minutes. <laughs> The secret for that graph that we act, we don't talk. <laughs> but anyhow, my name is Janne Kalliola. I have been born in Eastern Finland, close to Russian border, coding for 30 years. And now I'm running EXO and I'm talking about Talkot. It's a Finnish expression for a gathering of friends and neighbors to accomplish a task. This is from Wikipedia. And uh, Typically, it's for common concern, good for the group, or it might help, help somebody to build something that he can't do it by himself. And it's by definition voluntary. And now we go to the topic itself. I learned this sad fact from a futurologist that we don't have dreams anymore in the Western world. We don't dream of fridges or televisions. We have all of them. Most people nowadays don't dream of the fast cars anymore. Some might, yeah. All the things that I lasted for when I was eight are now either illegal or immoral. <laughs> so, we have it all here. There's no need to strive to meet good standards of living, especially in Norway, because the, those bastards, they have oil. They have lots of oil. <laughs> I was in Oslo last week in a, in a part of meeting, and uh, it was immaculately clean. Everything was in shape, everything was clean. You could see that these guys, they have money. So if the, if the Swedes have the old money, the new money that actually matters is in Norway, and they could buy also both Danish, Denmark and Sweden with the, with the oil fund, and that could be a sort of good trip on the memory lane. But anyhow, getting back to the topic, so this stuff has lost its importance. The things that our parents, the poor peasants of Norway uh, in the 50 years ago, dreamed of has no importance to us anymore. Fridge, TV, car, how many of the people in the room are lasting for that. I see no hands. We don't need anything as we already have it. And there are no material rewards for striving harder. And that's why we don't feel purpose in life. <laughs> why should we strive harder if we don't get anything out of it? So, what then? The sense of purpose of your life comes being meaningful to somebody. Doing meaningful things. Most of people here in the nice area of Shoditz, this morning when I was in Hodel and said, I, I'm going to Shoditz, said, nice place. Mm, I would like to be there too. But most probably, we people that can come to show this, this, this conference like this, we have meaningful jobs. Most of us, I do hope that we have meaningful jobs. I do, hopefully you do too. Uh, but there are a lot of jobs that I, I might be a bit elitist, but I can't really see much of meaningfulness that I enjoy moving things on, the, on, on a belt that says beep every time, and then I get the money from the, from the person buying the stuff and so forth. Of course, I help him to do it, but I can be replaced by machine. And you have seen, if you go to the UK supermarket, you have a lot of those always chirpy machines that inject cash or select payment type or something like that. And then I really hate those. But anyhow, getting meaning of those things might be really hard. Getting meaning of things that can be automated can be really hard. The futurologist that, that said this a few, few weeks back in, in one seminar that I was attending said that the, the, the getting meaningfulness is really easy. You take one hour a week and you do something meaningful to you for that one hour. 
Everybody that has kids knows that one hour is truly long time <laughs> to do things when you don't need to wipe anybody's ass. Uh, you don't need to need to uh, yell to somebody, typically people that you you love deeply and so forth, but you end up yelling them and so forth. So having one week, oh sorry, one hour a week, typically when the kids and the wife are on the bed, and then you can do something that means to you. Things that you love, you spare one hour for that. And then if and when you do a lot of it, you get good at it. Typically people that enjoy doing something are good at it. I know that there are a huge amount of wannabe artists in, the, in the, all the Nordic countries because we have the fun, funny thing that the state gives free tuition also to the uh, adult, adult people. So you might end up being there in an art class for 20 years and never got any artist skills whatsoever. So there are exceptions here. Hopefully I didn't... Uh, now, now hurt anybody's feelings, but yes, it, it might be that you are an absolutely shitty artist. <laughs> but uh, typically, when you do things, you get better at those. There are a lot of things that you can actually learn, and there's an attitude that whether you want to learn on, of it or not. Uh, there was a study made that there, there's a number of people that can't draw, think that they can't draw, and I guess that there are people in this room that, that say that I can't draw, I'm, I'm personally one of those. And then when you ask about those people that would you think that you would be able to learn to draw, most people say that no, I won't be able to draw. But actually drawing is a skill that you can learn in a year or so, unless you are completely, completely sort of blind uh, on, the, on the details and so forth. But when you do things that you love and you do with the passion, you get better at those. You end up in a situation that you are great at it. And there's passion on the, on, the, uh, on the play now. And then, wouldn't it be really, really awesomely cool that the things that you do for that one hour every week when everybody else is in the bed, and the world is your oyster for that one hour, would be meaningful for the rest of the world or for somebody else too. And if you would love to do things that you are great at, that the world needs, then you would have passion and mission on this one. And now we are in the concept of virtual talkot. So this, it, this means that the world is getting better because skillful people love to do things that matter to the world and to everybody else. And if you would be working with open source, there might be other things, but especially with open source, people working with, they, are there somebody, by, by the way, that, that works with open source? I know you are, but the others, yes, there are some. You are blessed. All the others, maybe you should do that too. I have a reason. Every single contribution to open source system makes it better. And there are people around the globe that would benefit from your work that you do. I was in a, in a Drupal sprint last weekend in Helsinki, in our office actually. We were organizing part of this time. And there was one guy that was with, has been visiting uh, India for a week or two, we sitting the Drupal comes there and bringing the community spirit and so forth. And we discussed this topic. And he said that there are guys there that can have a huge, huge impact on their careers, talents and everything, working with Drupal. And the things that we do, that we spend one Saturday there coding together, having pizzas, having, um, having some uh, lollipops for the, everybody that made a commit to the system could get the, get the lollipop and so forth. All that was sort of peanuts compared to that we can drag somebody out of poverty with the open source system. We can make sure that the money in India or China 
or any other third world country stays in that country with open source and doesn't go to the US and the Silicon Valley. Sorry if there's any Americans there, but actually uh, sometimes it's good that the people are, gi are allowed to keep their own money and not pay the license instead. And as an additional benefit, there are dozens of companies like us, like Varnish, that would like to hire you to work for the open source. So that completes, completes the picture that you are paid for it. And then in the middle, you get purpose <laughs> in everyday churn. Thank you. Ten minutes for the seconds. <laughs> I told you.